Hey everybody, so this video is just kind of off the fly, super informal, and I am wanted to talk about a topic. I had shared it on Instagram Live, and I wanted to kind of bring it over here for you all to see on YouTube. Um, this is just something I want to kind of think out loud about. Eventually I'm going to do kind of a nicer video on the topic, a lot more detailed. But I'm doing research uh, on the topic of maceration, so basically just cleaning skulls via uh, decomposing the, the tissue in a bucket of water. Um, but there's a lot to it that I think a lot of people don't really understand or realize, so I just wanted to kind of talk through a few of those things, a few of those things really quickly. Um, maceration, the term means to, uh, to soften, like tissue being softened. So it's really interesting, kind of depending on who you talk to, uh, it depends on what people's kind of definition of what maceration is. Um, I talked to a relative who is a nurse. I said, what is, what is maceration? And she was like, oh, isn't that when you put a bandage on someone and the skin gets all wrinkly? So basically the softening because there's moisture trapped under a bandage of the tissue. So that was her definition of what maceration was. Obviously from my perspective, someone who cleans skulls uh, using maceration is like, hmm, Totally different than what I do, right? But if you Google maceration uh, on YouTube, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff come up on winemaking. So it's it kind of all on the same uh, train of thought of kind of breaking down a material. Um, now, maceration is when you have a skull, you put it in a bucket of water, clean water, and then bacteria grows and it breaks down the flesh until eventually you're in, you end up with just a nice clean skull. Now there are two types of bacteria that are going to work for maceration. The first type is aerobic bacteria and then the second being anaerobic bacteria. Aerobic bacteria survives and thrives in an environment with oxygen. Anaerobic bacteria grows in an environment without oxygen. So we take a fresh bucket of water, you have lots of oxygen within the water, and aerobic bacteria is going to start to grow. If you don't change the water, okay, uh, the oxygen is going to escape from the water, and then you will be left with an environment where aerobic bacteria can't grow. So anaerobic bacteria will then take over and start to grow. Um, you kind of hear different things, different people saying, well, you should change the water, you shouldn't. It'll go faster if you change it. It won't go faster if you change it. Um, kind of the, the reality is, or at least from my own experience and what I'm learning, is anaerobic bacteria is very robust. Um, it's going to break down tissues very fast. But you're obviously going to have to introduce oxygen into the environment to keep it growing. Uh, and that's where every day or two days I'll change the water and that'll create an environment with oxygen. Um, now you think, well, you just, you just threw out all of the bacteria in the water, so how is it going to grow? But again, it's super robust. There's all kinds of bacteria still on the skull, in the bucket. Um, so when you pour in new water, it just, um, what's the term for it? It uh, expands. There's a term for that. I know there is. Uh, into the environment and just keeps working. Now, um, if you didn't change the water, anaerobic bacteria would start to grow tall tail sign of anaerobic bacteria is um, kind of a brownish burgundy uh, kind of film on your skull. So if you see that, that's an environment without oxygen and it's anaerobic bacteria that is growing. Um, now, bacteria in and of itself doesn't necessarily, uh, it does, but um, the, the process of decomposition um, is heightened by enzymes. Bacteria, by uh, eating the decomposed uh, tissue or organic material, create enzymes. Enzymes are a catalyst for decomposition. So um, it's, yes, the bacteria is great, but really the whole point of creating an environment for bacteria is to then create enzymes, which then um, quickens the process of decomposition, breaking down of the tissues. Anaerobic bacteria 
uh, an environment, again, when you're not changing the water in a bucket, you put a skull in there, you just leave it, um, it's a lot slower and it doesn't, doesn't uh, produce as many enzymes and hence it doesn't or it takes longer to clean a skull. So there's just lots of different things about this that I, I think most people don't even realize. Um, it's a fairly new um, technique, I guess you would say, for cleaning skulls in the broader audience. Obviously this has been going on for a long time, um, but I think a lot more people are getting introduced to it now. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of research. I'm going to put together hopefully a nice video on the topic, kind of going through some history and more of the details, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. Again, just quickly, maceration, cleaning skulls, or at least in my um, own experience here, it's just taking a skull, putting it in a bucket of water, changing the, changing the water every few days to introduce oxygen into the environment, uh, eventually over a period of time. Uh, if, if the water is heated, uh, the bacteria is going to grow faster. So I'll usually, I'll usually use some type of setup where the water is heated. And then just change the water, eventually the skull comes out really clean. Really good results, um, but depends on who you talk to. So, alright guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, just super laid back. Uh, if you have any questions, which I'm sure you do since I didn't explain everything, um, feel free to comment below, but I will be working on a video soon on the topic. So thanks guys.